Okay, this is kind of an extension of the problem that we just did. Um, it doesn't look the same, but we're using some of the same things. Okay, well, what, notice one issue we have is that on the left-hand side, we have cosine squared and sine squared. On the right-hand side, I have the fourth power here. Okay, so I either need to find a way to reduce these to squareds, or a way to build these up to fourths. Well, it's easier to break things down than to build things up because with algebra, whatever I do on this side to multiply and build up, I would have to do to the other side too, which would just build it larger. So one other strategy is to use factoring. Okay. Now, if you've done factoring, Hopefully you recognize this side as the difference of squared. Um, cosine to the fourth is cosine squared squared. And sine to the fourth is sine squared squared. <clears throat> and in algebra, we talk about when you have the difference of squares, you can factor it as the first term, so cosine squared theta, whatever we were squaring, plus the second term, which was sine squared, that's the other thing we were squaring, times your other set of parentheses is those same two values but subtracted. That is the difference of squares rule for factoring, and hopefully that's something that's familiar to you because it will come up also <laughs> quite a bit. When you have two things squared, the difference of them, you can factor it as the first plus the second, and the first minus the second. Notice what this has done is it's broken us down from fourths into squares. Now we look for identities. Is there anything we can do here? Because notice our left hand side looks almost like our right hand side. We do have the cosine squared minus sine squared right here, but we have this extra piece. So look at your identity sheet and see if there's anything about cosine squared plus sine squared. Well, you will see that there is an identity that says cosine squared plus sine squared or sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Well, perfect. That means I have 1 times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is just cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, and now my left side looks exactly like my right side, which means I have proven the identity. Okay, so this looks a little bit like our previous question. Um, we still have this cosine to the fourth minus sine to the fourth over here. Um, on the left-hand side, we have one minus two sine squared theta. We want to show that those two sides are equivalent. We're gonna do that again using algebra and our trig identities. So what might we do? Well, notice we have squareds over here and fourths over here, so again, we wanna See if we can break these down to squareds instead of fourths. Okay, well, to do that, again, we have the dis difference of squareds here. Um, notice this is the same as cosine squared squared would give us cosine to the fourth. And this is the same as sine squared squared. Okay, we can factor this using the difference of squares methods from algebra, um, where you end up with two factors here. One is the two values that were squared added together. Um, the other is the two values that were squared subtracted. So that would be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta for our first factor and cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta for our second factor. From here, remember we have that identity that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to what? it's equal to just 1. So that gives us 1 times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, so we continue on. Um, what can we do? Well, you might say, well, we can factor that down again. But let's stop for a second, look at what we have and where we want to go. Okay, we want cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta to look like 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. 
and notice one thing that's different is this side has just sines and this side has cosine. Is there any way we can make a cosine look like a sine instead? Is there an identity that deals with cosine squared and has it equaling something with a sine squared in it? There is. Um, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. That also is one of our identities. So we can replace our cosine squared with a 1 minus sine squared, and then this side will also only have sines, and we can see if that gets us any closer to what we're looking for. So we use our identity, we replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared theta, and then we still have that other minus sine squared theta. If we combine like terms, negative sine squared theta and negative sine squared theta gives us 1 minus 2 sine squared thetas. And now our left side, our right side are identical, and we have proven the identity. Okay, here is one final identity that we're going to prove. Um, and it's that cosine theta is equal to plus or minus cotangent over the square root of 1 plus cotangent squared theta. Well, if we were solving this just in general, and again, there's lots of ways to solve this identity to prove it, um, but if I were solving an equation and there were a square root, the first thing that I would do is square both sides to get rid of that square root. Well, it's not messing me up. Um, you can do that as long as you square the entire side, okay, on both sides. Well, on the left-hand side, that would give me cosine squared theta. On the right-hand side, the squaring would make this positive positive. It would also make the negative positive. So I don't need that plus or minus anymore. Um, on top, it squares my cotangent and makes it cotangent squared theta. In the denominator, square, squaring a square root eliminates that. Okay, so that is why I did it. And now I have 1 plus cotangent squared theta in the denominator. All right, from here, well, what do we got? Well, I don't, it doesn't really look a whole lot better. I have cosine over here and cotangents over here. Um, do I have any identities that I can use? Well, cotangent is cosine over sine. That might work if I changed everything to sines and cosines and simplified. In fact, it would work, but it would take a little longer than this next option I'm coming up with. Look at your identities. Is one, a lot of times, one plus the cotangent or the sine um, or tangent squared equals something. So look at your identities. Does one plus cotangent squared equal anything for one of our identities? Hopefully you found it. It does. Um, one of our identities says that 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So we can use that fact and we can replace the 1 plus cotangent with a cosecant. So now I have cotangent squared theta over cosecant squared theta. Am I getting closer? Well, I'm not sure. I have a cosine over here, cotangents and cosecants here. Since there's cosines nowhere in sight, my next thing would be, well, if I change this all to sines and cosines, will that help me at all? Okay, because I really need to have cosine visible somewhere. Um, cotangent, my numerator, is cosine over sine. So that means cotangent squared would be cosine squared over sine squared. Over my denominator here, cosecant is 1 over sine. So cosecant squared would be 1 over sine squared. Here I have a fraction divided by a fraction. And remember, our rule for dividing fractions is to invert or do the reciprocal of the bottom and multiply them. So that gives me cosecant, or excuse me, cosine squared over sine squared times, we invert this bottom one, that gives me sine squared over 1, and I multiply. Well, notice I have a sine squared in the top and the bottom. I can cancel those. And what does that leave me with? Just cosine squared over 1, or cosine squared theta. And now my left side, notice my left side, if I drop down here, that's what it was, was cosine squared theta, is identical to my right-hand side, and I have proven this identity.